like for a lot of kids, let's say in the US, EDM when it was super popular, you know, all this really terrible EDM music that was popular 10, 15 years ago, that was the gateway to find better music for some of these people. But that was their introduction to the music. Right now, this hard, fast techno is that, it's the EDM of this generation, but they're, but they're dressed in an underground way. So everyone thinks that it's underground music, but it's not, it's EDM. It's actually pop techno and it's the gateway. So I, like I always said to people, I don't care that it exists. I just wish people would stop comparing it to techno. It's not like, I think and this is not an ego. It's just, I think what I do and the music I come from, that's pure underground, true techno. This stuff is the, the door to open to find this. And I tell people like, just grow, you know, wait a few more years, go to a few more club nights where it's 15 hours of this boom, 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 boom. From the moment the doors open, you get tired and you start looking for something else. And so it's okay, like, cool, it exists, but maybe five, 10% of those people will start looking for something different, maybe something deeper, something more soulful, something more, you know, real, and they'll find their way. You know, so it's like, it's okay that it exists. Just don't put us in the same category. So I would, I would actually argue that the separation of the two, you know, there's not many people I think who are actually capable of mastering. And when I say mastering, being really good and spending hours and hours and hours and years perfecting their ability. So I think like for me, I grew up as a DJ. I became a producer later. Um, but in the era that I came up in, you had a very clear separation between those who were DJs and those who were producers, and you could earn a living being both. And the problem nowadays is you almost can't earn a living being producers. So uh, people who create good music suddenly get shoved into the spotlight of having to perform. And because of technology, maybe they can, they can technically perform. But I think the soul of a DJ and the soul of a producer are usually two separate things. Um, like for me as a producer, you know, it's something that, again, it's just time. I, I think it, it's just like my DJing. I've learned to speak as a DJ. I feel confident in how I speak as a DJ. As a producer, I think I, I need to spend as much time um, to perfect my ability to speak as a producer. So I think everything comes down to just time, experience, you know, positive, negatives, trying things and finding what, what your voice is in whatever way you choose. I mean, you know, technology is uh, a gift and a curse. Like uh, on one hand, technology, um, you know, allows people maybe to cheat or, or get to places quicker without actually putting the work or the knowledge or the understanding. But then on the reverse, technology also uh, gives opportunity to people who maybe never had those opportunities in the past. So maybe somebody really far away can, uh, you know, experiment with DJing and producing who 20 years ago had no access to drum machines, synthesizers or turntables. But the, the negative is, of course, you know, now anyone can be a DJ, anyone can be a producer and use the presets. And you mentioned a slice it's it actually connects to your first question the, the first question being you know the difference so we're trying to rebalance the idea that uh, uh, not everyone has to be a dj and a dj plays other people's music and without music the dance floor would be completely silent and i would have nothing to give so our hope is that somebody like me who earns money from playing other people's music now i've given via technology an easy button so that I can do something good and pass some of my earnings back down to the producers. So I would put us in the category of like using technology in a positive way to impact our community and give something back along the process of our success. Yeah, I mean, for anyone who doesn't understand or know what the wall of sound is, it's, it's, it's not even that it's a new concept. It's me taking a concept that I was raised on. And even before me, somebody else was influenced on probably going back to like the, the dub reggae sound systems where everyone danced to this huge wall of speakers. The DJ was on the other side of the room or even behind the sound system and, and the, the vessel, the DJ for the music was not the focus. The music was the center and the sound was the, the way it was delivered and how it was felt. And so 
maybe it was just the right moment for me to present this idea again because it was like an answer to all the things I think are wrong in our industry right now. Because now, you know, the DJ has become the rock star. The DJ has become the center of the focus. The DJ is on a stage with bright lights and LEDs. and We don't matter. I mean, we are just one part. I mean, yes, we matter, but we are just one part of all the parts in the chain that create the magic of the night. And if the goal is to connect everyone and bring everyone together, then the focus should actually be on the dance floor and not on some, you know, figure standing on a stage throwing heart signs and making, you know, dancing around like a clown. Really, uh, they should be focused on the art, the music and the delivery and the people should be focused on each other and, and the connection of the dance floor and the vibration of the sound. So to try to answer the question you actually asked is, yes, I we noticed a big difference on the dance floor. And I think at first, for especially a new generation, they really didn't know what to do when they don't see the DJ. So it maybe took them a few minutes to reacclimate to their surroundings and think, but wait, what do I look at? Where do I face? What direction? Where's my space? But then you start to notice people turning around and facing each other and dancing into the speakers because really the people will look wherever the music, the physical sound is coming from. The DJ doesn't have to be in that location. The DJ can be anywhere. I still play at festivals and, and by no means, I mean, when I came out with my very strong opinion in this video for the School of House a couple years ago about festivals destroying club culture, you know, it's not that I said festivals don't need to exist. I just wanted to make it very clear the separation of what a festival creates in our industry and, and in our community in terms of like short attention spans, short DJ sets, you know, at, versus a club where art is created, where community is created. And, you know, people said, but you still play festivals. Of course I do, because festivals also take up now almost 40 to 50 percent of our year of music. So it's not that they can't exist. I just wish there was a healthy balance and I wish artists and especially the audience would understand a healthy balance between, you know, festivals can be fun, you're outside, you're maybe in the summer, all these things. But if they destroy the ultimate culture that we're, you know, that supports community, small uh, groups of people, uh, marginalized people, you know, all, all these groups that really thrive in the club scene, then the festivals destroy everything we work so hard to do. So I just think a healthy balance, one not affecting the other so much. And, and you know, again, the, the crowd understanding where their money goes and understanding the value of supporting community and artists versus just the entertainment of a festival. So, you know, okay, somebody might look at me and say, ah, oh, but you're so underground. And I would even argue and say, I'm too successful to be underground anymore. So the difference is, is that I carry the underground aesthetic. I bring the underground culture and energy that I grew up on and the values to my position of success, maybe on a commercial level. So I think there's two ways to view it. You know, like real underground, I don't even know about. Maybe you don't know about. It's not advertised as openly. It's what you discover when you live in a city and you meet some people and they say, hey, do you want to come to this really cool thing in, in some small warehouse with a hundred people? That's the true underground. And a lot of times also, that's where some of the most creative energy is made. And then somebody discovers it in the mainstream and then they bring it there. And then maybe they bring it to the bigger stage. But I think, there will always be an underground.